Fernando, tell us about uh, the data from Combi AD. I have presented at ASMO a, a clinical trial on the adjuvant use of dobrafenib and trametinib, the BRF and the MEK inhibitor, which was compared to a double placebo. It was a double blinded clinical trial, and it showed an amazing hazard ratio of uh, 0.47. So there is a clear-cut benefit with an, an even more amazing uh, p-value with 13 zeros. And, uh, and I need to say this is convincing, but everybody was asking for overall survival and distant metastasis-free survival. Distant metastasis uh, survival it has a ratio in the same range and overall survival point 57. This is the best results I have so far ever seen in an adjuvant trial in melanoma. And it shows that for the BRF mutated patients, we have a good alternative to either you know, uh, conventional interferon, pegylated interferon, which was never approved in Europe, or high-dose ipilimumab, which is not approved at all in Europe. So we had only low-dose or high-dose conventional interferon available here. For us, it's something completely new. So when you compare uh, Dabtrem, BRAF, MEK to IPI, it sounds like you have a superior hazard ratio by far. Obviously, the p-value is superior, although there you have longer follow-up yeah. and survival. And then yeah. the Checkmate 238 study, which I presented at ESMO, again, it's a bit of apples and oranges there. It was a trial with an active control arm. It was comparing nivolumab yeah. with ipilimumab. But the hazard ratio also looked pretty good. It was 0.65. And there you have a trial that was stopped at an early interim analysis. So you only have RFS. You don't have survival data. And it will be confounded by the fact that there's an inherent or de facto crossover. But nonetheless, it sounds like now we have multiple options for terrific adjuvant therapy, which I guess your point is it's going to reduce the surgeon's role in stage three, in the management of stage three disease. You know, I, I learned from you and others who are for decades in, in medical oncology, you know, you should never compare one clinical trial to the other one because the eligibility criteria varied. You know, one clinical trial was taking the stage 3 patients, namely the Combi AD, whereas the other one was refraining from stage 3A and taking some patients, a small proportion of patients with stage 4 disease in the adjuvant setting. So it's really difficult to compare across all clinical trials, although in the future it will be done. There will be Kaplan-Meier survival curve superimposed to speculate which is better. But I like your clinical trial result, the 0.65. Because ipilimumab alone, with 10 mg per kick, has shown a survival improvement already over placebo. So you can speculate if you add one hazard ratio to the other one, that you come up with more or less a hazard ratio in the same range. But this is, again, is pure speculation. I, I think we would call that the back of the napkin calculation. But the, the nice <laughs> thing, by the <laughs> way, about... I like the, the term. It's good. The, the nice thing about the Nevo versus Ipi is it wasn't just that it had a hazard ratio that was highly favorable. It wasn't that it had a p-value of 0 0.0001 that was highly favorable. The toxicity was considerably less. Mm. Yeah. Something like less than 9% of patients had serious toxicity, grade 3, 4, or had to stop versus something like 30 or 40% who either had to stop yeah. or had serious toxicity. So uh, obviously very favorable. But what can you tell us about the toxicity of COMBI-AD? Any words? If there was a typical toxicity observed for stage 4 melanoma patients. No big surprises. It was used for a year in the adjuvant setting. But the treatment discontinuation rate was 24%. So it appears for me to be a little higher for reasons we don't understand at this point of time why so many discontinued. I believe it's also the situation of an adjuvant treatment where there was not such a big pressure as for stage 4 melanoma treatment in the patients. Because if you look on the individual grade 3, 4 toxicities, it's not higher than in, in every clinical trial, particularly Combi D and Combi V for stage 4 disease. So is anyone going to use adjuvant ipilimumab anymore? I mean, it's not even approved in the EU. Michael. It's approved in the U.S. Will anyone use it anymore after Adju these data? I think adjuvant ipilimumab, despite its approval, I think will be replaced. If you're going to be giving adjuvant immune therapy, you'll choose adjuvant nivolumab. If you're going to be considering targeted therapy, it would be the BRAF and MEK combination to BRAF and trametinib for stage 3 patients. I think the question will really be, if you have a BRAF mutant patient in the stage three setting, do you give adjuvant nivolumab or do you give adjuvant dibrafenib and trametinib? Mm. And of course, we have mm. no randomized data. Mm. This is the same problem we have in the metastatic mm. setting. Now we're just shifting our conversation mm. earlier yep. to stage three resected melanoma. Although there may be a way out, which is statistically not, shall we say, kosher, but 
if you break out the stage 3B3C patients that are BRAF mutated, which again is slicing and dicing from 238, who got NEVO and look at their RFS, you'd have to then take the stage 3BC patients out of BRIM or out of uh, Combi AD and look only at the RFS because you only have RFS data from Checkmate 238 and do the comparison. At the end of the day, it'll be an interesting argument to see how well those patients did. The Combi AD trial was stratified for two factors. Uh, one factor was the V600E versus V600K patients. The other one was stage 3A versus B versus C. Ah. And if you look on the subgroup analysis, you will see so consistent data for every subgroup factor. And I think it was 15 different categories which have been evaluated. So there is no doubt it works as good in stage 3A, B, and C. One of the other issues I was just impressed with, with really not only the Combi AD, and, but also an adjuvant study of, of Vemurafin versus placebo, is that the duration of targeted inhibition was limited in these studies. These patients weren't on targeted therapy for years and years and years, yet the benefit in terms of reducing the likelihood of disease recurrence did seem to be maintained beyond the period of time that these patients were on the active treatment. Mm. So there may be something immunologic happening or maybe something more permanent that happens when patients are on somewhat of a limited course of targeted therapy as adjuvant treatment, and we don't really completely understand what's going on there just but quite yet. Carolyn? We will have, uh, hopefully very soon, uh, next uh, AAS year, the results of the ERTC trial uh, sponsored by uh, uh, MSD with PAMRO versus uh, ah. placebo. So then we will be more comparable to combi ad because we will have a placebo arm, so that will be important. Was that, were the eligibility criteria similar? Yeah. So 3A, B, C. So again, uh, that will come out, you would have thought it would come out already, at least with RFS, but sometime in 2018. Yes. That will, so now, now at this ESMO, the data for Checkmate versus Combi AD will generate a whole series of arguments. Then the arguments will get even more complicated when we have the URTC data. And then it gets even worse if you start thinking about patients going on Ipinevo versus Nevo alone which could, again, each, each trial may change the parameter. Yeah. We had a few years where we used IPI. Now we'll have time where we use braf mec or, or nivolumab, and who knows what it will be. I found it a pity, you know, that the new trial, the Checkmate trial, which uses IPI plus Nevo, is aiming for a 12-month period. That would be an ideal situation to test just a three-month regimen, which could be very attractive to certain patients if you explain them. You don't need to be treated for a whole year. The aim is for three months. Even if they have sequelae from toxicities, could be a very attractive scheme. Replacing others, you know, you have the option of one year or even longer treatment compared to just three months of treatment. Yes, but imagine it doesn't work, then you don't know if it's because it was not long enough. So it's, it's difficult. That's, that's a, a tough sell. And I'll say one thing, I've done piloting of Ipinevo adjuvant therapy, and Ipi 3 Nevo 1 was just not tolerable in the adjuvant setting where you have patients with stage 3B, 3C disease, for example, who might have a 50% chance of relapse, but that means they have a 50% chance of being cured just sitting there. Mm -hmm. That's a bit of a tough sell, which is why we flipped the doses, and now we're actually giving Nevo maintenance every month, which makes it even more palatable. And in the 915 trial, I think oh. they stretch the IPI out to six weeks. That's true. So I, That's I true. think that'll make it easier mm -hmm. for patients. Yep.